This is Twit. Something that's not chaos is when you get that perfect entertainment system. Now, we've all dreamt about it, right? There is no perfect entertainment system. No, there system. must be. It's actually take it back. Uh, <laughs> take it back. I, the closest to a perfect entertainment system I've seen, uh, uh, a friend of mine, Jason Lord, Source AV, Torrance, California. If you have an amazing AV need, a home theater need, dude will take care of you if you want to spend a little money, all the money. But there, he has six different rooms set up, and it is some of the most flawless home theater demos I've ever seen. I, however live in the real world yeah. with you know bills to pay and children uh, and, budgets. I, and budgets and stuff like that. But I still, I am aspirational. And as far as we've seen, kind of like the pinnacle of, of dealing with, well, you know. Okay, we got an AVR remote. Oh, wait, I, I know what you're going to say. We got a Roku remote. I know what you're going to say. I it's know the saying. integrated uh, interface inside your smart TV, right? Because that's the perfect thing. It works for everything. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I don't think so. No, actually, uh, so you know Robert Heron, I co-host uh, AVR, yes. Robert Heron. I, it was about eight months ago, I cornered Robert Heron with a stick. Uh, and I told him he, he just <laughs> stop reviewing the operating system on televisions because we both know. I'm like, is there one that's still working two years after? And he's like, mm. and I was like, just plug an Apple TV or a Roku box yep. and it wouldn't be done, uh, which is really kind of the best advice you can get. Um, but this is Kava, right? So we've, we're setting up a problem. Like the closest, the best all-in-one yep. solution we've seen is essentially uh, the Logitech Harmony system, right? Where you punch in your devices, it squirts those down to a remote control. You know, I hit, I'm going to watch a Blu-ray. And all of the cool things happen and your Blu-ray player launches or your Apple TV launches or whatever it is. It's you've the set. grandparent test. Can you give the control yeah. to your grandfather, grandmother, and let them go at it? And it will work 100% of the time. And you're right, that Logitech remote got very close but then it kind of went away. Well, it's still it's still here. It's just people don't talk about that much. This is a Cavo. Now, what is the first thing you notice about Cavo? Uh, it looks kind of like a surfboard, dude. It does look kind of like a surfboard, but it's, look, this is wood. Ooh. I was gonna say it's not black, shiny plastic, but actually it is black, shiny plastic, but there's wood, um, which means it's a little more aesthetically appealing. There is nice. eight HDMI input. Well, let me do this without putting my finger in front of the camera. There are eight HDMI input ports on here, one that goes into your television, an ethernet connection, a couple of USB connections, an IR blaster connection, and yes, kids, it does need a power cable, um, but all of those are hidden. So and you, all with cable management. That's actually really important because you don't want a rat's nest right next to your your, your central entertainment center. I have not yet found a cable management system that I cannot make look like a king rat's <laughs> nest, but um, that's neither here nor there. So what's interesting about this is, if we can pull it up on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's say... <sighs> I know what you want. <laughs> here, start watch and then ask for the movie. Uh, play the Hitman's Bodyguard, or watch the Hitman's Bodyguard, if I just confused it. You just confused it. <laughs> oh, there we go, it's oh, picked up. <laughs> look at that. So. Three things just happened there. It's one, we didn't have to go, can I can we pull back to me for a second? It didn't have to be like this, into the remote. Um, I'm sorry, I'm channeling my dad, it's a long story. Uh, and two, all you gotta do is hit the, the, the microphone button on here and talk. So, like it just happened, watch Hitman's Bodyguard. And if you use, <laughs> if you don't say it properly, you end up confusing it, which is unkind to the Cabo. Uh, watch Ren and Stempy. So what's gonna do is it's now actually like, look nice. kids, it's pulling up Brennan Stempy. That's content. That's not launch the Apple TV. That's not launch the Roku. And I can choose what to watch on. It's available on Amazon. It's on iTunes. It's on Vudu. Um, so what this does is it takes all of your devices. It combines them into one interface with one remote control with one set of voice commands. And it does things like this. If I hit the big combo button, it's going to pop up from the bottom. If I hit the combo button, it's going to... There it is. There we go. And I've got... Whoops the settings, because I was getting too enthusiastic on live television. Um, for example, the watch list. This may be my favorite thing, where in one space, you can look at everything that you or your family members have been watching, not because you're trying to spy Megan Maroney. Um, so when it's when it's bringing up Amazon Prime or Netflix or Showtime or HBO now, this is all running in the Kava, right? This is yes. not on another box it's connected to. Yes, this to. is basically an overlay from the Kava. Nice, okay. And what that is is telling me like, oh yeah, I want to finish watching skateboarding's first wave because watching documentaries about sporting events I wasn't no. around. Oh, documentaries about the Baja, the Baja, um, is it, what is it now? 1,000. 1, <laughs> I, I wanted to say 5,000. Like, that sounds way too, too. much. <laughs> there was a Baja 2000, that's a long oh, story. No. But the idea is like all of the stuff that you've been watching. So instead of being, like normally you might go to, oh, you know, let's go play Netflix. 
And so what's nice about this, what I love about that watch list display oh. is instead of going into Netflix, now it's switching. It takes a little time switching. If you are a high speed thumb jockey that moves fast in between applications, you might find this part a little frustrating. If you're living a more leisurely lifestyle and the idea of simply speaking. Now when to you Jarvis, did that, it said it went Netflix on Apple TV and it's yes. just making that choice for you. And there's crazy stuff in the back. Well, you can associate, I can associate Netflix okay. with the Apple TV or the Roku or whatever. It won't control the applications on your television. I should warn you that now. But so now normally we go to Netflix and be like, oh yeah, I need this person. And then I'm going to scroll through 22 layers of Netflix menus because it's Tuesday <laughs> and Netflix decided to put the stuff you were watching 17 layers down instead of near the top where you want it. Or, or my personal favorite because uh, oh, now, my see, father today, keeps logging into my account. He's messed up my playlist, so now I'm watching all these his bad B series from the 1980s. <laughs> That's the thing. I gave him it. He's got his own thing. He's got his own icon. No, he uses mine. Nothing, nothing really complicates your Netflix suggestions like somebody else showing up at your house for three days. But so, you know, what this does, though, is it goes beyond, it's not just a remote control. Right. It is, you know, it is applying intelligence. It's, it's applying machine vision. Because basically what it's it is slick. doing is pretending it's a, a, a creature, a human, a, a remote control operator, and it's like launching Apple TV, and then it's clicking around and opening things up. It's trippy. It's fascinating. Um, is it there yet? It is very much an early adopter product. Okay. Um, and I, I talked to a couple other people who have been playing around with this. They're doing 5,000 units of this this year. They cost $400 each. So it is 4K ready, it is 1080p ready. I suspect for a lot of people who, are, who would spend $400 for a device to solve their problems vis-a-vis -vis remote controls and getting to their mm -hmm. content with less trauma, um, they would want HDR support for that, which this does not, this have. not have. And they, they basically flat out said, the chipsets aren't ready, we couldn't do that, this is what we can do. And it is one of those things where when this is running, it is so cool. And I don't really get excited about products anymore because... Because you've seen literally tens of thousands. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen entirely too many, but it was really cool to have it work. But there's also some stuff, if it does not have a service index, for example, when you set it up, there's like Netflix, and there's HBO right. Go, and HBO right. Now, and Showtime. And so this it hasn't and been thing. populated yet, right. and it's but just if, blank. If I want to do something like uh, Watch Call the Midwife, and notice, out of reaction, despite the fact that holding the remote control halfway across the room works just fine, let me try that again. <laughs> A band, a band called, called Death, Death is kind of like the Midwife. Though, Not Masterpiece to be Theater, honest. but probably very entertaining. <laughs> Watch Call the Midwife. And I want to say right now, um, as somebody who always has trouble with uh, voice recognition, this has been shockingly good. Some of the best yeah. you know, voice recognition I've ever worked with. But look, it's got Call the Midwife, and I'm going to go watch on. And it doesn't have, because it okay. doesn't aware of the service, it doesn't have the PBS stuff with the latest season right. that my wife has been watching. So at that point, it's like, oh, um, let's go back to the Apple TV. And Th that's, that's a problem, though, because I mean, that's a huge annoyance when someone goes, oh, I can watch the show. And then suddenly it tells them, oh, well, you have to subscribe to something else. Well, you don't necessarily have it. But this is also, it's... You know, this is a very young device. Yeah. It's, it, you know, this is the first time it's been released to the public. And if I go to PBS, so right now I'm in Netflix and I'm going to click back. And now I go to PBS. But if they index PBS in the future, and I don't see why they wouldn't, they will be able to add all that stuff on there. Let me pause that before somebody sees something and has to have a conversation <laughs> about where babies come from. Sorry, parents out there. Um, Call the midwife. You know. That's what they do. No, but, but it the, was yeah. The hardware. The hardware looks really good and it looks yeah. solid. The software they can improve. The service they can improve. They can give well, us the more software. Options, I gotta more say, intelligence. If the software is is much more finished than I really expected it to be. Because I will also say when I open this up. You guys, you should review this. And I was like, I will review this. And I'm like, it's so pretty. It's going to be a nightmare to run. And I will say, setting up, configuring it um, is a slog, right? Because yeah. you basically have to program in all of your devices. And it knows stuff like Apple TVs and Rokus. And it will probably recognize your television. And it's that whole like, OK, I have a this television. And then it does that. And I'm, But once it's all, and then you have to you know, give it access to all of your services. And once you do that, then it mashes that all together into one fairly effective environment. So steep learning curve, a, yeah. a lot of setup, but once you have it, it, it sounds it, like it's kind of magical. And I mean, again, you've looked at so many of these products. I will trust you if you say this is the best experience you've had out of, a, out of a, a, an attempt at You're going to have to be patient with it. For example, yeah. I have, you know, if you're looking at the bell curve of sort of home theater systems, um, I run a projector that 
and all of my equipment is in a closet behind the projector. So that is a bad thing for a Cabo because they don't do really do HDMI power control uh, over CEC, they do IR. So I would right. actually have to do an IR blaster and they come with some really, a really actually fantastic, I mean, feel this, this is heft, this is style. Oh, geez. Look at the cables that yeah, come Yeah, most with. IR blasters I, I feel, just feel like air. Yeah, and th so they're they're making an effort to make a stylish, sophisticated looking product that has some build quality to it. And I think they're in this for the long run because the, the people that are kind of the, the the driving force behind this have years of experience in dealing with things like, you know, Harmony and, and Xboxes and stuff like that. I think like a, a lot of other companies that are trying to do something like this, it's all going to be about the Revision 2. Revision 1 yeah. is for early adopters. They've, they've, they've definitely got something on their hands here. But there are a couple of refinements like HDR and mm -hmm. CEC of control channel, They're, which could they, really improve it. They, in their experience, like basically talking to them about their experience, CEC power control for a lot of televisions does not work particularly well. Mm -hmm. Now, it's actually been, it's like one of the rare technologies that's that been fairly flawless in my me, experience, yeah. but I also am not dealing with thousands of people yeah. and, a, and a product like this, so I'm gonna take their word for it. Um, the HDR support is something a lot of people will want, because it would be tough to buy a $400 device and that then, doesn't support your brand new three thousand dollar TV. Yeah, and I think there's sort of a. I think a lot of the people who are going to buy a four hundred dollar remote are the people who already have a thousand dollar or three thousand yeah. dollar TV. And that's yeah, you know, that also puts it in perspective. When you can get a fairly badass four K HDR television, you know, for six hundred and fifty dollars, a four hundred dollar, you know. Even if it is, you know, even if this is Jarvis, which for all intents and purposes it is, it just doesn't talk back to you in SAS. Um, it just does what you want, which may make it better than Jarvis. Um, you know, you're still talking about a $400 device. Right. Um, a lot of people, I think, are going to find that that this technology, and I think you're right, especially as they move towards the next product, a, a less early adopter product, it is going to be amazing. Because right now, it's in the, we have done this amazing amount of work and brought together these huge, sophisticated technologies. And, and it's this close. It's well, this close. But it's like everything really else, right? When they when they go to a gold test for a release of Windows, mm -hmm. they release it to 114 billion people. Oh, because, maybe that's a really bad example. Well, okay. <laughs> just, but I'm just gonna my point being there. is, always, is there is no way to have a test lab large enough to, to test, test all of the possible combinations of right. devices and tuners and televisions and setups and AVRs and everything else. So at this point, I was, I gotta say, there were a lot of annoying early adopter things. Like it would come back to sort of the wrong place inside of the HBO TV, you know, the mm -hmm. HBO now. But for the most part, and of course, like I have a projector and it doesn't really work well with projectors, but I'm a projector guy and that's this much of the market, so deal with it, Patrick, which I'll do well. I'll just get a different, you know, device. IR blaster yeah. and I'll fix that problem. Um, lovely design. The voice control works. The voice control works. The voice control takes you to the television program you want to see. Can you see me being excited about this? Because that's really freaking cool. Um, this makes you, I see emotion. You're really happy about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean back into one of the old shows that we put on the pile and just say, if someone was and let's say that they're an, an early adopter, so let's put them in right. that category already. Is the Cavo a try, a buy, or a don't buy? I think it's a try. It's a try. Okay, yeah. that's solid. I, I think a lot of people, you know, it, it's it's it does what it says it does. In a year, it'll probably be a lot better at doing it after they, they get those 5,000 units out for 2018 and, and they are iterating and developing and making the firmware better and teaching it. I wanted to, my biggest complaint uh, outside of not having HDR is I would like it to switch between things faster. And I think uh, that yeah. is something that is going to happen as they do firmware updates. So, but you know, if you're the kind of person who's like, pink, 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 yeah. Seven, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're tying a cow or something at the race when you're switching between programs. You know who you are. I mean, a friend of mine, you know, a friend of mine was like, no, 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 missing a thing? You're not missing a thing. Okay. They have cowboys in Hawaii. You don't see them that often. They're on the big, actually, no, I know exactly where they are. I've seen the cows. They're working. They're not running around at rodeos. But the whole point is, like, you have to be a little patient with this right now. And for a lot of people, you know, I'm going to spend a couple of hours watching Masterpiece Theater. Get me to the Delete Expert program immediately. You might find it a little frustrating. I also anticipate that this will be faster and faster as time goes right, by. Right, right. And I like, like it. That. I like it a lot. Hey, look, look. If, if you can get Patrick excited about it, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Because, again, you have seen a lot of this deck. I have so a many products. Lot of this deck. So much bad idea in home theater. This is, I mean, this this goes beyond anything we've ever seen in a home theater. It is an early adopter product. It is $400. You know I mean? If you have a choice between, like, you know, getting a better television and getting this, I'd probably get the better television. I mean, that's just the, co that's the cost of a latte. I have no idea how much things cost. <laughs> 
It's, that's approximately, well, $2.75 for a medium cup of coffee at Starbucks. In Rome, that's like 400 coffees. Here, it, it's like... If, 122. Like that. It's not great. It's not yeah. Great. yeah. Patrick, thank you very much. Again, this is the, the Cavo. This, this is, is Cavo. all the stuff you've had connected to the Cavo. This is available now, right? I actually had more stuff connected to it. Oh. But there's only so much of my home theater I can that tear can apart and still have be allowed back into the house when I get back. <laughs> Got it. You know, so right now your wife's at home going, why is nothing working? <laughs> <laughs> I left the AVR at home, honey. <laughs> yeah, there will be words. <laughs> I know. I, let me say, it is really <laughs> cool. There are a couple of big caveats, mostly that it doesn't do HDR, and you are going to have to be a little patient with certain features. All right, so, all right. Well, I'll thank you very much for that. your review, and thank you very much for the in-depth look at what you think is the future of technology. Some people can be skeptical, but I expect this to, to be around and reiterated probably in about a year or I, so. I, I see good things coming from Cabo. Yeah. I have faith.